Hi. This is something a little different. It's still in the realm of electricity. Uh, as I was an electrician for 45 years in a local hospital, so I've seen worse things burn up and burn out from low voltage all the way up to 5,000 volts. And a lot of it is equipment failure. As things get old, that's normal. And some of it I've seen, as in this, happened in this instance, is was actually whoever installed some of this, they didn't know what they were doing. That's all I can say, plain out, didn't know what they were doing. Now, this uh, house is a rental. Um, some close relative is renting it, and they mentioned they had an outlet it didn't work and there was some burn spots on the lamp cord that was plugged into it on the, and also the outlet on the opposite wall in the other bedroom wasn't working and i mentioned well i said i can come take care of that uh, if you ask your landlord probably quicker than he can get someone out there so the landlord said go ahead and take care of it so I went out to take a look, and you'd be surprised what was inside, but was even worse after I found some of the wiring that had been done in the rest of the house. The whole thing really needs updated. I think this house was updated probably back in the 70s. Some of this was put in because obviously it looked like there was old knob and tube originally in this house. But whoever did it, maybe the homeowner, really really wasn't up to up to par on how to install thing and 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 this is the end result of it and i have to say that there was a receptacle or a, a uh, lamp plugged into this particular receptacle but the one on the opposite wall had had a uh, heater plugged into it and i always warn everybody it was plugged straight into the receptacle but i that's uh, a warning I tell people, don't plug these in to a plug strip. If you have a appliance device that draws high current and you will definitely have issues that would have something like this. And this was caused by a loose connection that wasn't installed right. So let's open up the receptacle and take a look. But first, before you want to do this, you want to make sure the power is off. So you can't really get in there with a voltmeter if you don't know what breaker it is, other than shutting them all off. And, and a good choice is a non-contact voltmeter. Now I have three of them. Uh, this is a pretty El, El Cheapo. It, it, it works. And I have a couple that I used in my daily work when I was an electrician in the hospital. Um, this is a nice one from X-Tech. It also has a uh, infrared temperature monitor on the back end, and see the display there where you can you can uh, shoot it at a device and measure the temperature. But my and my favorite is this one Fleur. This is a good one. Actually, it has a flashlight on one end, but this is also a uh, will do high and low voltage, and it has a nice uh, vibration to it. So that you know you come across the voltage. If you hold it on once and you get the green light and a little hum there, and that's generally for your higher voltages uh, over uh, like 90 volts on up. But if you need to test a lower voltage, say you were trying to troubleshoot something that was 24 volt AC, 28 volt AC, you hit the button again. Whoops, too fast. There you go. And actually, you see even my fluorescent lights are making it go off. The uh, LED changes to an orange, and that shows you how sensitive it is. So this is a nice one. Nice one to use for that. But let's take a peek at what I did. Let's open this up and take a look at it first. Well, let's... <laughs> Let's open this up and take a look inside. It's a little dark. We got the breakers off. Oh, 
that guy's pretty cotton in there. the dropsies. I think I know why this happened, but let's take the outlet out first and take a look and see. And we'll talk about that. Interesting enough, somebody put 20 amp breakers on this 15 amp line. <clears throat> Looks like we'll be replacing a little bit of wire some in here. Can take a good look at that. Wow. The box is coming out of the wall. What they did, they used this as a feed through to the outlet in the next room. And you see the trouble you have. You look. The wire is wrapped around the screw the wrong way. And the same way here. Well, no, this one, no, this one's wrapped wrong. This one is wrapped right, but this one, this is, looks like this is what got hot in the first place. And it's wrapped the wrong direction around the screw. So, what caused this to overheat? What well, was improper connections? I have the receptacle from the other room. And first thing they did was they did not wrap the wire the right way around the screw. Because you need to wrap the wire in the direction the screw is turning. And the way they had it, I'll show you a close up in a minute of this, is that it's hard to tighten down because they have the the wires not all the way around the screw. That's definitely a no-no. And this is how I took it out. You see how loose that is? That was probably what was going on on the other side. Loose connection. And they did the same thing with on the other side with the neutral is the wire is not wrapped all around the screw properly. Now that wire is going in the right direction, but it's not wrapped all the way around the screw and that's gonna cause you problems. So this person, whoever did this, that was the first thing they did wrong. And I ended up changing this receptacle and the one on the opposite wall because I actually had to pull a short piece of wire through the wall to replace that because the wiring was damaged. That old Romex, it isn't as hardy and the insulation was kind of hard. And I was able to fish more from the other connection up through the floor because there was a junction box down below in the basement and I, there was enough wire for me to fish up and pull and cut short where the damaged wire was and cut it off. So, but the, the interesting thing is this, in this house uh, was the breaker panels. First, this is number 14 wire. And they had 20 amp breakers on this number 14 wire. So there was no chance of that ever tripping. And this, this, this is after the rest of it fell out, 
But as you can see, this outlet could have caught on fire in there. And if it wasn't for the electrical box, you know, it saved the day, I guess. But the breaker did not trip because it was the wrong size breaker for starters. So I don't know if it would have tripped. But I know the newer style breakers that are required in newer homes, the, the arc breakers, they will set. They, they can sense whether you have a arc of uh, when it's burning, you get an arc of electricity and they will trip where a normal breaker won't do that. But, but uh, also these cheap, these were cheap receptacles. And if you're going to replace a receptacle, stay away from those 79 cent pieces of junk. Believe me, I replaced a lot of hospital or receptacles in the hospital. Of course, we use hospital grade there, and in areas like some of the buildings that didn't require hospital grade, we use spec grade, a better grade. And here's what I use to replace the uh, these two receptacles with the nice solid. It has the ground strap is completely across, and you have the back wire with the clamp screw clamps on them which holds the wire way better than wrapping it around screws a lot of the outlets are designed that way now some of the old ones you could either wrap it around the screw or they had those push in which those are junk too they you couldn't get a good connection with a push in on the back if you pushed it in the wire in the, that really wasn't a good idea for them to do that but uh you can see the new receptacle and uh also, uh, here's what the Mel plug looked like when I replaced that. I, I bought a new one at Lowe's, uh, just a cheap two prong that you can replace on 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 a lamp cord. That's all that's required. But another thing that they did, this was crazy. That circuit was part of a 220 volt circuit, and they had three wire with ground running from the breaker panel of course that was had your red black and white in it and your ground wire and one leg went to these receptacles and the 220 leg went over they installed a one of those floor mount those long uh, heaters that you can get I'm not sure what type it was we didn't even look but but it was never in use anyway and they installed that on the other 220. So I just pulled that wire out because no use having it in there. And that, and that was crazy because the other thing that they did, if you look back at the breaker panel here, they had that 220 circuit on two 110 volt breakers, single pole instead of a double pole. And it was just, just a botched, whole botched setup. So you, you need to be careful when you're wiring and that you do it right. Get some good receptacles if you have to replace one at home and put it together right and make sure that you're using good connectors. Um, I, I've used wire. Everybody's on hot on those wagos, but I've used wire nuts my whole life working at the hospital. I know they're using a lot of them now when in some of the newer construction, but you get a you get a wire knot on there and get it twisted good and tightened. I never ha I never had an issue with any of the wiring I did with wire nuts. Of course, so I always use Scotch flock wire nuts. I didn't use those cheap junk plastic ones, and I never had a overheating issue or anything that I ever installed or repaired. And I had to change a lot of receptacles because back in the Late 70s, when I started there, mostly all the receptacles were old. There was no grounding because they used conduit. The uh, and they would just use that for the ground to the box when they they threaded the uh, pipe to put into the boxes. So we had to replace it before any renovations were done. We changed every receptacle in that place to hospital grade. And the only thing we had to ground, of course, was was the box. And we would uh, drill drill the hole in the back of the metal box and 
put a uh, put a ground uh, screw in there with a piece of green wire and then attach that also to the receptacle because you can't trust the uh, ears to give you a ground, that's for sure, because they come loose with used in vibration. But that's it for today. And if you have any questions or comments, and you got to be careful with it and make electricity and make sure you do things right. I've seen a lot of wrong in my life and had to repair a lot of wrong things that were done by people who didn't know what they were doing. And it wasn't their fault. They were doing their best. I imagine in this house, it was probably the homeowner years ago because uh, we were actually laughing at the plumbing jobs that was done. So I'm sure he did some of that too, but it got by. And uh, the landlord, I sent him a note and uh, I sent a text message to my relative and, and pass this on to your landlord because these are the other things that should be done. Those breakers should be done, replaced, and possibly more of the outlets because I didn't check them all. I'm sure there are some more bad ones and they aren't wired properly. But it's just a matter of you wouldn't notice it until you plugged a high current device in, some type of appliance, some type of a heater, which that's what happened here because they use the receptacle for a feed through to the next receptacle. And that first receptacle, as I showed you, it had that, that connection most likely was loose because the wire wasn't on right. So the heater that was plugged in on the other one fed through and that whole thing just eventually overheated as it would do. So be safe and have a good day.